In this video, I'm going to talk about the wounded masculine and what that means to me. So along my journey, I found that in particular situations, it's been extremely difficult to work around other men, specifically when it comes to like taking guidance from other men, <clears throat> seeking approval from people maybe I shouldn't be seeking approval from. And one of the things that I reflected on and that came up for me was like the rockiness of the relationship with my own father and specifically what that means to me and how that shows up in my own life now. So <clears throat> if you think about it, like what does your father give you when you're a child? Well, they give you guidance. They give you wisdom. <clears throat> they show you how to be a grounded man walking through a chaotic world. <clears throat> they show you how to love. They show you how to protect and be a warrior, how to protect your family, the woman you care about, other their other children, their home. Now, what happens when you don't have that? So something that I have been thinking about for like the last few years is like, okay, well, if you unpack that, what if you don't have that and you have the opposite where your, your relationship with your father was a fucking war zone? Well, <clears throat> a lot of times what you're going to have is women who end up in like dom domestically abusive situations, if that's how you say it, like abusive situations with their significant other down the road. And then you have men who are doing the opposite to that, to their significant other. And they're trying to be overly possessive, overly dominant. Um, and they use their, they don't know how to use their voice. So they use their actions to like create um, subordinates and their significant other. So when you don't have that, a healthy, positive relationship, when you are a child, like a baby, a child with your father, it creates a sense of uncertainty within your own mind, within your own body. I believe another thing that the father shows you over time is how to express yourself as a man through this world that's constantly trying to make us robotic. So to laugh, to show emotions, to freely express yourself, to work, to put your body and use your body and your mind towards something that you really fucking love and you care about and you give back to the world. I think that's what like a proper father should do. <clears throat> There's more about this, um, this topic if you want to go further with it in the way of the superior man written by David data. It's an incredible book. I've got a lot of insights out of it. So when you don't have this relationship, which I feel like, well, I know that it just wasn't really there for me. So one thing that I had to do and that I've always done naturally as like a child, as a teenager is that I found other men who I can study, who I could be around, who would mentor me. And, um, I often listen to my coaches the most. I was not a good like student in school. I was actually a terrible student. I don't know how I got through school to be honest. Um, <laughs> and <clears throat> I remember like always just trying to soak up everything that I could like from my coaches and my grandfather because I just feel like I didn't have that biologically through my father and you know i'm not trying to cast any judgments here or like place blame or trying to be the victim because everybody has their own journey they like my my biological parents they did the best that they could with what they had with the information that they had they did the best that they fucking could however for me i walk around with these wounds still as a young man i have to figure out a way to process these unprocessed emotions, to figure out how to express myself in a world that's constantly, <laughs> damn, I just slip, almost slip, 
in a world that feels like it wants to kind of make you a robot or shut you down in certain ways. I have to figure out more ways to put myself around other men who are going to mentor me to show me things about business, things about love, how to take care of a family, how to take care of yourself, how to not get lost in that fucking process and just end up on drugs or something. <clears throat> so the thing about me is that like, I always felt like, fuck man, you know, I have a big disadvantage. And when I looked at other people, I would like with these things, with these advantages of having like a mother and a father, like a healthy relationship, I'd become very envious of them. Like almost like I could naturally feel their nervous system was calmer than mine. And it like frustrated the fuck out of me. Like, man, these guys are so like calm and happy. And like, I want that. that that's all I want is just to feel normal, to feel safe in my own goddamn body and to not feel like an alien walking on this planet i want to be able to connect with other people and it would piss me off like man i feel like i got the short end of the stick like why why would this like happen what's the point of it all like how does this even fucking make sense why are you gonna put uh, children through that because it's not just me there's a whole mental health pandemic going on of people committing suicide not having their fathers not having their mothers at such a young age and it scientifically shows how fucked up it makes people if it goes unhealed untreated so for me like <clears throat> in college i got hooked on uh, manic depression medication because i'm like well <clears throat> i'm a sophomore in college here's a man who i'm trying to seek out for a mentor uh psychiatrist guy he gives me 20 minutes to talk and then he's like boom here you go take these pills i started taking them for like two years and i'm like yeah i mean this is cool as a crutch but i don't fucking want to do this my whole life dude like i want to be <clears throat> i want to feel you know and i think for me i've always felt like in a deep way, it was almost unsafe to feel and be in my body. And that's kind of what these things do over time. Like these pills, these medications, <clears throat> they numb and they shut down certain things in our fucking brain. And that's why there's a whole list of other repercussions of other side effects when we come up off them. So after a few years, I got off them. And then I talked to <clears throat> one of my friends about doing like a medicine journey and I did that and it opened up <clears throat> a whole nother portal <clears throat> of awareness for me. And that sent me deeper into training, into martial arts. And it, it really like, I feel like that medicine journey, like opened up my heart and gave me a bird's eye view of what it could look like if I continue to work on my heart being open. And that's a crazy statement because like, if you look at a child, you could obviously see that their eyes are bright. They have lightness in their pupils, lightness in their eyes. They walk around this world with an open heart. And then over time, it slowly gets shut off, cut off from the world. And then maybe just a fucking vault shuts. Boom. And you cut out everyone and everything. So a very important thing for me to constantly come back to you is putting myself around positive and empowering people, specifically men, to help me heal this part of my heart that had, one, a lot to say, and two, was like lost. I, I feel like for a long time, or my mind that felt lost. And um, like I had lack of direction, lack of purpose, and in my like early 20s that's when i really started seeing the men like i saw men like this i looked at a man and i was like he's not alive he's not alive because he doesn't like the work that he does meaning it doesn't like ignite him it doesn't do anything for him and he's just kind of walking passively day by day and then i look at other men and i'm like that motherfucker's alive he's alive because he's doing something every day that he fucking loves and he's giving back and he's making this community like better. And I wanna be around that. So when I started putting myself more around men like that, 
<clears throat> around training, around work, wherever I could find these people, even school when I was in school, in college, I really found that it helped me out a lot because I feel like deep down, that's like the natural course of like a motherfucking man. Like you learn, you acquire knowledge, information, and like you work yourself up to such like a, a high degree that you almost want to give back. And um, I noticed that like when I went deeper into myself, deeper into training, deeper into martial arts, more and more people would open up to me. Like the more authentic that I got with myself, the more authentic that these people came across to me. Like I had a mentor that showed me a lot through like martial arts and the business of martial arts and how to become an awesome fighter, but also how to have like, like the spirit of a traditional martial artist and intertwine that into like modern combat sports. I had a, another friend who's been helping me out with, uh, there's some people sh snowshoeing down here. who has been helping me out with business and breath work and showing me different ways to heal my mind, heal my body, heal my relationships. And there's multiple people like this that I found that have really given me a whole lot of clarity and gave me, given me a lot of direction. And one thing about myself is like, if I respect these motherfuckers and I really like, I really fuck with them. Hey, 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 no, no. And I really fuck with them. If they recommend something, I'm going to do it. Like if they recommend a book, I'm going to go read that book the next week. If they recommend a podcast, boom, I'm going to, you know, like it's very important as like a young man <clears throat> for us to find our elders in our community. And I remember doing that like on YouTube when I was younger, like, oh man, you know, if I could just meet this person one day and this and that. But the thing is, bro, like we need people in person that are like gonna help us get the game and like learn the game. We need people in person, like energy in front of us where you can feel them, where you can like hug them, you could talk to them, you could see them eye to eye. Cause I think what happens when you only watch people through a screen, and I say this because like I've done this for a long time, where like I, I, watch, I would watch people and I would almost like put them on a pedestal of like, oh man, they're like almost perfect, they don't have, you know, they're almost like not even human. And um, I make them out into like this thing of like just perfect fuckingness. So what I found when I started working with people more in person is like it, it becomes more of a thing that's like it, it's like you could tr you could trust it. And it's not just from like a screen that you're watching and we we need that especially if we're trying hey off 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 hello and we need that especially if we're trying to heal the parts of our heart that have been disfragmented when it comes to trust and when it comes to other relationships and specifically when it comes to men this is very important at least it was for me. And I think like now, you know, I was on like medication, like when I was 21 to like 23, I'm 28 now I'm building a business. I'm in a, a way different headspace. I'm not just surviving and holding on anymore. I feel like I am thriving on the inside and I could, I could see myself and how I've like healed these certain parts of my mind, of my body, of my emotions. And it is specifically from tangible things that I have gone into. Going and seeking out mentors, elders, sitting in medicine circles, <clears throat> loving the work that I do, and even going in and uh, healing my own relationship with um, some counseling and yeah, this is kind of a long video and I'm trying to figure out a way to cut it. <laughs> so this is a very important topic to me. 
and I made one on um, possession and feminine energy. And this one is more dedicated towards masculine energy and, and healing that. Because I think that these are two pillars in our life where if they're just not like, if they're not made whole again, we're just going to be searching outside of ourselves for so long. And it's like, it's already there. It's like, it's already, <clears throat> it's already inside of you. Our job is to figure out different places, different people, different things that could help remind us of that and to go in and to soften and to reopen our heart and live with the open heart, even if it hurts. That's a quote by David Data, way of the superior man. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you got something out of it and plan on making more of these. This helps me unpack some of the thoughts that I have in my head. I think very deeply of these things. And this is from my heart to yours. I hope it finds you well and I wish you well on your healing journey.